small local racetracks. It seems almost all communities have one, or should I say, had one. Some communities had multiple within a very short distance from each other. This gave birth to local racing associations, like the Pioneer Valley Racing Association, right here in good old Massachusetts. These tracks, whether they be dirt or asphalt, helped propel local racers to become bigger stars or just made them local legends. Today, these tracks are all but forgotten. Please join me as we take a trip down memory lane and hit the road to explore what is left of these old tracks. This is Lost and Found. life and sketchy memories of Pico Raceway make it quite the interesting lost and forgotten track. South of Rutland, Vermont, off of Route 7 and built in 1951, Pico Raceway opened to a huge fanfare. Sunday racing was approved by the voters of Rutland Town of a vote of 125 to 64 in early August of 1951 and a packed crowd of over 4,000 fans gathered for the inaugural race on August 26. The idea for the half-mile dirt track came from an incident at the local airport where kids were drag racing, and there was a, quote, big blowout down there, according to West Rutland's Ed Fabian. Sheriff Gino Franzoni of Rutland County responded to the incident. The racetrack was constructed primarily to give people a place to race. Sheriff Franzoni, Abe Newman, and Pascal Patsy Romano were the founders of Pico Raceway and created Pico Raceway Incorporated. During the short time the track was open, it attracted prominent racers such as Steve Danish from Cropiesville, New York, Jeep Herbert of Schenectady, New York, Dave Brooks of Manchester, Vermont, Gene Treo of Manchester Depot, Vermont, Spence Parkhurst of New York, George Janowski of Stafford Springs, Connecticut, Jolly Ollie Palmer of Westmere, New York, and local racing legend Buddy Bardwell of Keene, New Hampshire. Today, the former site of Pico Raceway is now home of General Electric. All but few indications still exist. The short life of Pico Raceway deserves to be remembered.